this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. How are you doing on this Sunday evening? Yes, it's Sunday evening. And uh, I haven't settled yet, but I am going to settle down and get quiet and ready for tomorrow. So before I do that, I wanted to give you all a rest stop, right? Because we're getting ready for the new week and we we can go into the new week with some new thoughts in mind. Amen. Amen. So you are here at the rest stop. For those of you who do not know me, I am the Reverend Dr. Malachi Williams. And here at the rest stop, what do we do? Well, we read the word of God. We rest. We stop. We ask the Lord to give us new revelation and we actually refuel for our next leg of the journey. You know how you do when you go to a rest stop. Do I have to go through it again? Mm Mm-hmm. Driving down the road. Oh, there's a rest stop. Pull over, right? Put the car in park. Might, you know, take the seatbelt off. You know, go into the little girl's room, handle your business, right? Go in the little boy's room, handle your business. You come out. Go to the, you know, the vending machine, right? You know, put a dollar in there, get something out. Then you go and you sit in the car and you just rest, right? If it's a nice day, you go sit on the bench. You say, all right, just take it in. Someone's walking their dog. Some of, you know, other people, you know, getting a little something out the machine. You just take it all in and then you get back in the car. Put the seatbelt on, right? And then you, you go the next leg of the journey. That's what we do here at the rest stop. We take a moment to refuel or to rest ourselves. Um, yes, some rest stops do have a little gas station. Not all of them, but some do. Um, you take a moment, refuel, rest yourself, and then you go on to the next place. And so that's what we do, right? We, we keep going forward. And so uh, that is what you find yourself doing here at the rest stop. You come and you get a moment to refresh. Amen. So we also read out of the lectionary. And so that's what I'm going to do. Let me pull up the lectionary readings for today. So let's see here. I want to read the first reading. Mm-hmm. That's a good one. We, we love this story. This story. This poor guy. Oh my gosh. Every time I think about it, I'm just like, this guy. Yeah, <laughs> you know who I'm talking about. Jonah. Uh-huh. The prophet Jonah. Right? What a hard way to go to learn these lessons. Can you imagine being in the belly of a fish? I don't even want to imagine that. Whew. But thank God for his grace and his mercy, right? That he was not um digested by the fish amen and that he was able to be regurgitated back onto dry land but we find ourselves in the text today so we're in the third chapter jonah chapter three verses one through five and then in the lectionary they have ten as well all right so we're going to go jonah chapter three verses one through five and then to verse ten when you have the word of god say amen Amen. Amen. So here we are. And it reads thusly. The word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time, saying, get up, go to Nineveh, that great city, and proclaim to it the message that I tell you. So Jonah set out and went to Nineveh according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceedingly large city, a three days walk across. Jonah began to go into the city, going a day's walk, and he cried out, 40 days more, and Nineveh Nineveh shall be overthrown. Right? And the people of Nineveh believed God. They proclaimed a fast and everyone great and small put on sackcloth. When God saw what they did, how they turned from their evil ways, God changed his mind about the calamity that he had said he would bring upon them and he did 
not do it. Come on, let's talk about his grace and his mercy right here. We need to talk about it right here because y'all know the Ninevites were something else. <laughs> they were the enemies of Israel, but they were something else. The text says they were wicked people. Woo! They were something, right? Read about them. The Ninevites, uh, so the Assyrians, right? So, uh, but they, they, they humbled themselves. They humbled themselves. They fasted and they put on sackcloth and, and, and God relented. He did not bring calamity upon them. The, the type of calamity that we would think that they would deserve, right? But when they all, uh, right here, and the people of Nineveh believed God, they proclaimed the fast. Everyone, great and small, put on sackcloth. Right, so here we have the. Um, I'm got a little choked up. I'm sorry. Um, here we have them humbling themselves, putting on sackcloth, and 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 really crying out to God for mercy, and God extends mercy to them. So that's a good lesson to learn. Now, what about Jonah? Let's look, let's look at Jonah here, because it says that the word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time. Now this is after his trauma <laughs> is traumatic come on you don't know it's trauma to be in the belly of a, a fish for what how many days no 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 i i don't even want to be with a guppy I, I mean nonetheless in the belly of a fish right so this is trauma he he's been traumatized, but some of sometimes we bring it upon ourselves, right? Because when God called him, when when the call came to him, what did he do? He had it, he got all up in his feelings and he went another way. He went an opposite direction of what God called him to do. Right. Although this is a great task that God has set before him to go and to proclaim to the Ninevites. Right. But he got in his feelings because he was like, I don't really like those people. And so and you're just going to do whatever you want to do anyway. And he's like, I, I don't want any parts of it. So he gets in the boat and he goes in the opposite direction. And then what happens? A huge storm develops. Right. And, and it's not only a tragedy for Jonah. But now other people are involved because of his mess, because he didn't listen to God. Now other people are in danger. And, but what do they do? They throw him over because he says, throw me over. Now, here's the question that I have about this. Why didn't he just jump himself? Why involve other people in your mess? Because he's like, throw me overboard, right? And they're like, ah, oh, we're not going to be responsible for killing you, oh. right? But nonetheless, they do it, throw him overboard. And when they do, the storm stops, it subsides, but fish comes, swallows him up, and now he's in his belly. And in the fish, we hear a prayer. So that's what we see in, in the chapter, I laid out this prayer of Jonah, right? This, the, it, and you see the tragedy, you see the trauma, right? And many of us do that. We bring trauma and tragedy upon ourselves when we do not a, obey God, B, trust him, and C, receive the invitation, right? Because this call is an invitation. It's an invitation to do what? Yes, to love God, to obey God, but it's an invitation for Jonah to love his enemies. We didn't know that. We don't really want to go there. We don't really want to love our enemies, but this is what the invitation to Jonah is, is to love them, to love them. And if God wants to extend mercy to them, so be it. Let God do what God wants to do. And many of us are on our boats right now <laughs> because we don't want to extend love. Come on, let's extend the love. Come on, you can do it. You can extend love to your enemies. To your enemies. Love your enemies. And so... This is what the invitation is to Jonah. And the word of the Lord comes to him after he comes out of the fish um, a second time. So God is a God of second chances. We know this, right? A second time, come on. What is the call that you don't want to hear? God speak to you. 
What is the call? Come on, avail yourself. It's like last week. Remember the boy in the temple, right? Remember how that one was preparing to become a prophet, right? Remember Samuel in the temple? Now he's tasked with this great responsibility to tell Eli that his family is a hot mess. And God is going to make sure that he fulfills that promise to Eli. That's a huge responsibility. The boy didn't want to give that bad news. Who wants to be a part of that bad news? Not me, right? So he had to be trained in this way to still tell Eli everything that God said. And what does Eli say? It's the Lord. So whatever he, whatever his will is, so be it. I will comply, right? With the will of God. That's a hard lesson for Eli to learn, right? It was a hard way for him to go, right? But here we have similar to that. When are you, or even myself, going to receive the invitation from God, the call from God to do what God has called you to do and show up fully to do it? This is where we are with this, all right? So we have this in this text. Call comes to him a second time. He does it. Now, because he's still in his feelings and in his emotions, right? He's still mad about it. After God relents, he's mad about it. Now he's, you know, back in his feelings and he's, you know, under under this little twiggy thing that grows up, right? And just just mad still. So let's let's control our emotions and let's just do what God has called us to do. Now, in the same uh lectionary, when you go down to the gospel reading, here's an immediate response. It's an immediate response, right? So you have in the gospel reading, let's see what the gospel reading is. It's out of Mark, I believe. Yeah, Mark chapter one, right? And so you have verses 14 through 20. You got four, four disciples, two sets of brothers, right? You have um, Simon and his brother, Andrew, right? And then you have um, James and John. Let me just make sure. Let me see, let me see here. Yeah, Simon and Andrew. And then you have, James and John, sons of Zebedee. So what do we see in that particular text? Jesus calls and they immediately respond, all right? Little different. Jonah Jonah's has to get a whole lot happening to him before he says yes, right? But he says yes. But right here in this text, these guys immediately respond with a yes. But here's what you probably kind of skip over. Uh, the backdrop is still a tragic backdrop because it starts off here now after John was arrested. Oh my goodness. This is, we're, we're never going to see John free again. This is a horrible thing that happens. So John gets arrested um, and Jesus comes to Galilee proclaiming the good news of God and saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. It's a similar message of John. He now is taking, almost sort of taking up the mantle of his cousin and continuing that message, even in the midst of tragedy, because there's tragedy happening. The fact that John has been in prison now, that's tragic, right? But yet he has to decrease that his, his cousin, our savior, would increase, right? Um, and so as, as this tragedy is taking place where some yes is happening. Yes, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Come on, guys. You there? Are you there with me? In the midst of tragedy, in the midst of bad things that happen, still say yes to God. Come on, let's, let's move forward and say yes. It's a new year. It's a new day. It's a new season. It's a new opportunity for you. It's a new possibility for you. Receive the invitation of God right? What is he calling you to do? Vocare, the Latin vocation. What is he calling you to do? Let's rest and let's stop with that question. Amen? Amen. Our Father and our God, we want to thank you once again for this uh, time in your word, Lord. We have a question before us, Lord. It's a question 
that we need to ask ourselves and even ask you, Lord, um, what are you calling us to do? What are you calling me to do, Lord? Move me past my emotions and my feelings. This, this is our prayer. Move us past our emotions and our feelings and even our prejudices, Lord, so that we may uh, be at the right place at the right time doing what it is you called us to in this day, in this season, and in this hour, we pray. Amen. A simple prayer, a hard task. You can do it. You can do it. God has given you the ability to do it. Let's go forth in this week, receiving God's invitation and asking him the question and preparing ourselves for the answer. Amen. Amen. Y'all have a wonderful week. Thank you so much for joining me here at the rest stop. And I will see you all at the very next rest stop. Bye. <music>